जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहार यमुना तीरा राम
हरिनाम संकीर्तन की जगत गुरु श्रील प्रभुपाद की बिताए गौर प्रेमानंदे हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू अगेन फॉर द ऑपरचुनिटी सो टुडे वी गोइंग टू स्पीक फ्यू पास टाइम्स of uh, damodara and yashoda mai the wonderful relationship that they have thank you kirtan devotees thank you very much hari krishna hari okay so um we have some um, we usually speak about some really wonderful past times of krishna and how the supreme lord when we study the bhagavad gita also how krishna is uh, the controller of the entire cosmos is the controller of the entire universe so we hear about so many wonderful past times of krishna and how he is the supreme controller but today we're going to speak about the amazing past times of someone who controls even krishna and krishna is completely under the control of that personality that is mother yashoda okay yashoda mai ki so uh, can somebody tell me why is uh, krishna called as damodara you would have heard about this in the last few weeks maybe so what is the meaning of the word damodara why is he called as damodara damodara means so okay. okay damodara right so it's a very beautiful past time and uh, this episode has not yet happened um, we celebrate the entire month kartika month but this specifically happens on um, diwali when we spend uh, uh, celebrate our dipavali or diwali that's when this particular past time happens okay uh, it coincides with the same day when lord ramachandra appears um, uh, lord ramachandra comes back to ayodhya okay so on the same day uh, when that happened um, and many many uh, yugas later uh, this particular past time also happens on the same day okay so we will talk about a few past times uh, unlimited past times are there so we'll talk about a few past times of yashoda mai and baby krishna okay today so that we are in the mood and we remember krishna in that particular way 
so when we are um, of the many pastimes we can see that when we read krishna book or the 10th canto of shrimad bhagavatam we have which was the first asura that krishna killed as a baby anyone knows even before putan even before putan he was a small baby there was a demon who could take any form even the form of furniture ah shakatasura right so a uh, shakatasura was uh, was it after putan yeah after putan Okay. Maybe I'm confused. Yeah, the cart. Oh, maybe. After after Putana. Okay, sorry, I'm confused. Okay, so Shakata Sura before Damodara. There was Shakata Sura. There is Putana, and there is Trinavrata. Okay. These are the three pastimes. So um, this Shakata Sura, when uh, baby Krishna was kept under the cart, Krishna killed the demon with one. kick hardly a kick it was just a you know micro kick with a touch of his uh, toe right now what is the shakata sura represent he comes in the form of a cart right he can take any form but he appears in the form of a cart so why did he appear in the what is the significance of this cart why cart and krishna killing a cart what is the significance of that see all these demons are representatives of the anarthas that we have inside right so shakata sura represents the anartha of baggage that we carry in our consciousness right cart carries a lot of load baggage so we also carry a lot of baggage the baggage of i am this and i am that and you know i am the ceo of a certain company or i'm a big manager somewhere or i'm a very rich person or i'm coming from a very celebrated family or whatever these are all the various baggages and uh, all these are not allowed in the service of krishna so krishna immediately breaks that so when we pray to krishna who is the killer of shakata sura then we are actually asking for relief from our own baggage because we also have various baggages though we are all in the form of devotees we dress like devotees and all that but these anarthas are still there and we wish that these anarthas go away okay so like that each demon there is a different uh, anartha that krishna takes care of so shakata sura is there then this um, um uh, trinavrata demon happened when there was so much wind and all of that and that you know uh, he picks up krishna then krishna holds his juggler vein and presses it and strangles it and you know pulls his collar bone and he feels the weight of you know some gigantic mountain uh, uh, trinavrata is unable to he's a whirlwind he's a whirlwind demon and he falls then we have um, the celebrated putana putana is a witch and this putana comes and she um, uh, when she uh, this is a very interesting thing putana is a witch because when she comes and she does not come in the form of a witch she comes in the form of like a very beautiful apsara uh, in fact not the usual apsara that we may have heard of in uh, the heavenly planets she almost resembled mahalakshmi and her beauty was so much that she seemed very motherly specifically she seemed very motherly and the clothes that she wore and her behavior resembled that of um, mother yashoda herself okay sorry i was not told about this okay so um she resembled mother yashoda and then she appears and she comes and everybody is very stunned looking at putana that who is she and some of them are discussing is she from our village can't be because we've never seen anybody like that before then somebody said that she is going directly to uh, yashoda and nanda baba's house so maybe it's mahalakshmi herself who's coming to see krishna so they were all discussing amongst themselves because they've never seen anybody like that and with her maya she was able to cover the minds of everyone there and you know delude the minds of everyone so they 
they didn't realize what should be done, what should not be done. And with this Maya, she picked up baby Krishna. And then she wanted to breastfeed baby Krishna. And she did that also. And her uh, breast milk was anointed with poison, very dangerous poison. So all of us know this particular pastime. And uh, this Putana, uh, once, you know, she was breastfeeding Krishna and then Krishna pulled out her entire life. And in this way, due to the intense pain, she grew, she grew and she grew like a big giant. And then once she lost her life, she fell. Okay, And she fell in her real form as Putana. She lost her beautiful form. She couldn't pretend anymore and she falls. Now, um, this anartha that um, Putana represents is that of a false guru. Who is a false guru? Why a false guru? Because a false guru changes their form and comes as someone you can trust. But internally, they are actually very dangerous demons. Okay, So there can be many people in this world who may look like gurus, who may look like people you can trust but they may not be so. Now, it may be our um, natural tendency to point at others and look at others and say that, ah, I remember this one particular guru I may have seen on YouTube or whatever. But it's very important that before we point our fingers at someone, we should point, up, point the fingers at ourselves. That, would I be a false guru? Right? We should all think of it ourselves. That, am I a false guru? That, am I, a, am I pretending to be a devotee while internally being something else. So I should pray to Krishna, the killer of Putana, and ask him that if I have such false tendencies, if there is a Putana within me, please do kill that Putana, so that I can be 100% authentic in your service. Now, why do we talk about these particular pastimes when we are talking about Mother Yashoda? Is because what is unique about Putana is that Putana, she had um, a desire to feed Krishna, breastfeed Krishna. And while doing so, she reminded Krishna of Mother Yashoda. Krishna was remembering Mother Yashoda while looking at Putana. That even my mother breastfeeds me and there is this lady who is also wanting to breastfeed me. So Krishna, you cannot be more positive than Krishna. So Krishna was very positive in his outlook and he looked at Putana. And he remembered Yashoda. And because he remembered Yashoda, because Putana reminded him of Mother Yashoda, after she died, Krishna liberated her. And she gets the position of Mother Yashoda herself in Goloka, in the spiritual world. Right? So, Yeah, so Trinavrata represents our arrogance because we think we are the ones who are elevating Krishna. Sometimes through our preaching, through our Sankirtan, through our various things, we feel that I am the one who is promoting Krishna. I am the one who is lifting Krishna. Right? So Trinavrata lifted Krishna up in the air. So sometimes out of arrogance, because we may be wonderful preachers, we may be thinking, oh, I am speaking so nicely, so... People are attracted to Krishna. I am promoting Krishna in so many ways. Correct? So, he is lifting Krishna. He thinks he is the one who is lifting Krishna. So, Krishna slammed him down. So, we have to think about ourselves before thinking of anyone else. That I think that if I was not there, nobody would know about Krishna. Because I am the great promoter of Krishna. I am the one lifting Krishna. But in truth, it is Krishna who is doing everything. Krishna is engaging us. Lord Ramachandra did not need the Vanaras to cross uh, the Samudra, right? Uh, he just engaged them. He said, you do it. I can do it myself. But I want to engage all of you in the service. So he engaged Hanumanji also. He engaged a small squirrel also. But he did not need anything. He could have done it himself. In fact, Sita Devi herself could have done it. She didn't need anyone. Right? She is Jagadamba. So, we need to know that we are those monkeys and the Lord is simply engaging us. But in that engagement, if I think that I have become very powerful and I'm the one who's promoting Krishna and without me, nobody would get to know about Krishna, then I'm a big fool. And that means there is Trinavrata living inside. So Krishna is the killer of that Trinavrata. 
So we have to pray to the killer of Trinavrata that I have a Trinavrata within me also, a whirlwind. Please kindly uh, destroy him and kill him so that I may become a wonderful, authentic devotee the way you want me to be. Like that. So, um, anyway, uh, now Putana, she goes to the spiritual world, but it is said that uh, she did not really, you cannot replace Mother Yashoda, but she got the opportunity to be in the association of Mother Yashoda in Goloka Vrindavan. Okay, like that. Now, after all these uh, deadly incidents of all the demons coming and attacking Krishna in multiple ways, Mother Yashoda thought that there is something, something is not right. Something is not right. Maybe, you know, mothers usually think like this, that somebody has put some evil eye on my child, right? Something like that. And then, you know, they do different things. I don't know if you know of any Kriyas, you know, either you use, you can use rock salt, you can use uh, chili, you know, red chili and uh, mustard and other, there are other items different depending on which culture you are coming from. And you go clockwise, you go anti-clockwise, then you burn it. Okay, like that. Mm -hmm. So in this way, you can remove the evil eye that someone would have put uh, on the child. Okay, it's done on specific days, like you can do it on Amavasya. You can do it on Sundays also, like that. Sunday is one day when you can do it, or you can choose Amavasya. These are certain days when they remove the Rishti. Okay, like that. Um, so even uh, traditionally, there is one thing that a lot of people don't do these days. It's a lost art that both Yashoda and Rohini, Rohini is the mother of Balaramji, right? They did something that is, today is a lost art. Uh, they took Krishna to a cow and they took the tail of a cow and they took the tail of the cow and, you know, took it like this, like uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise. It's a very powerful thing. So even today, if you're walking somewhere and uh, if a cow's tail touches us, it is said that it is very auspicious. If it happens voluntarily, it is even better. So it's not that you go find a cow and uh, disturb the cow everywhere now. Uh, but uh, if the cow, you're walking and the cow voluntarily does something, uh, if there is, you know, some some kind of an evil eye or some, you know, bad energy inside you, it goes away, right? So then it, that's why cow is so special, is so special in the Vedic uh, culture. Today, we, it's something that is lost. Uh, but Cow is not a commodity that we can just use like that. Even when we are consuming milk and all that, cow is not a factory, a milk producing factory. Um, Gau Mata should be taken care of. She needs to be protected. She needs to be fed. She should be kept joyfully. Right. So these are the various things. Anyway, so Mother Yashoda and Rohini also did this to Krishna, thinking that somebody is evil eye or Krishna is so sweet. So somebody would have done something. So to do that. Now they said, I think he should be fine. So, um, so that no demons come in, trouble Krishna. And just to pacify them, Krishna, many demons are to be killed, but Krishna gave them a break for some time from all these uh, demons. Mm. So, there were many pastimes in between at that particular time when um, Krishna, some very sweet pastimes when Krishna was a, uh, as a baby, he used to crawl and um, as he was crawling one day, um, I'm trying to follow the sequence to tell you a past time. So Krishna, uh, we obviously know, very naughty. And in one such incident, Krishna used to wear, a, you know, like a waist belt. You know, babies wear a waist belt, so uh, filled with bells and all that. So that uh, we know that he's crawling here and there, you know, Mother Yashoda needs to know. So he used to wear a waist belt and he used to crawl. And um, Mother Yashoda used to look at this and uh, see that, okay, he is playing somewhere here. And she used to be busy with her work. And one day, Krishna realized that she is not looking and I can go do whatever I want to. So, slowly he goes crawling, 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 he goes somewhere. And as he is crawling, he is able to hear the sound of his own waist belt. <laughs> so, he is able to hear it, but he doesn't realize the sound is coming from his own waist belt. And as he is crawling, he is happy that nobody is uh, looking at him. But at the same time, he hears the sound and he's turning around and he's looking. There is someone following me. Because even Mother Yashoda and Rohini, they also have anklets on their feet. And that also has the same sound. So he's just wondering, am I being followed? So he looks 
he turns around here and there and uh, there is nobody there and he's just wondering okay maybe nobody's falling and then he crawls again he hears a sound again and again he's, uh, he turns around and uh, mother yashoda from far away from the door from the corner of the door she is looking at baby krishna doing this and her heart heart fills with so much of joy just looking at baby uh, krishna who is playing and he's scared and he's going through all of this and she just thinking that he's so adorable what makes um, mother yashoda so special is that even for a moment even in her sleep she never forgot krishna she is always thinking about krishna in fact the greatest of uh, sages recite the most wonderful prayers to krishna that is why one of the names of krishna is uttama shloka we recite prayers like purusha sukta etc which are the most exalted vedic prayers mother yashoda did not recite any of those prayers mother yashoda it is said she would make her own poetry when she was thinking of krishna when she is churning the butter she would constantly keep thinking and she would make her own poetry and she would talk talk about how this uh, demon came and that demon came they all came to attack my baby but my baby was completely protected by the blessings of narayana somehow he is the favorite of narayana and narayana is blessing him okay because she doesn't know that uh, he is narayana himself the original so in this way she said i don't know why my krishna is so fortunate that despite all these demons my krishna is always safe so thinking of all these she would make her own songs and own poetry with her own words and krishna enjoyed that much more than any purusha sukta chanted perfectly so this is the the uh, the glory of mother yashoda and in this way while pleasing uh, mother yashoda one day mother yashoda was breastfeeding krishna and while breastfeeding krishna um she did not ask krishna but krishna was enjoying drinking the milk so much because it was not ordinary milk this was coming from her heart so much of love so he was enjoying it so much that he was drinking and drinking and drinking and somewhere in between his heart filled with fear that maybe now i have been drinking for a long time what if mother yashoda stops me and says krishna how much will you drink now you can stop so he was thinking is she going to ask me to stop because i don't want her to stop so then what do i do so he was in this anxiety thinking that she may but she hasn't asked him to stop but he is thinking that she may ask me to stop so in this way uh, he he devises a plan that what should i do what can i give her in return because she is giving her entire heart her complete love to me and she has completely disclosed herself to me how can i keep anything in hiding so let me also disclose myself completely to her and in this way he yawns and then uh, she just she sees oh my baby is tired you know when a baby is drinking milk for a long time then it becomes tired then it yawns so she says he's yawning oh he's yawning and you know mother is um niriksha manaha is the word used for yashoda mai that she became she started inspecting that every mother inspects the child no there is some boil coming something happening in the teeth something in the mouth let me look at so every mother does that so when she opened the mouth she also started looking inside the mouth that let me see what is there in his mouth i want to see how many teeth he has so she looks into the mouth and what does she see she starts seeing the entire universe she sees the earth she sees outside the earth the various planets then she sees the entire cosmos then she goes she sees the higher planets the uh, devalokas then she sees the lower planets all the patala loka she sees all the lower planets she sees the naga loka she sees all the snakes there then she sees all the devatas then she sees lord shiva then she sees that lord brahma is there she sees devi she sees all of them and then zoom out and then zoom in back to earth and in earth she comes to vrindavan and in vrindavan she is able to gokula and then she is able to see herself and she sees herself looking at baby krishna's mouth and she's just looking at this and she's wondering what is going on that am i uh, is something wrong with me 
and then her head spins when she is just confused at this time. This is the first time Krishna shows the entire cosmos to Mother Yashoda. But this incident happens again at another time. Okay. And that is another time when Krishna eats uh, mud. Right. So this incident happens twice. It happened only once for Arjuna and that happened externally. For Mother Yashoda it happened internally. So Mother Yashoda sees this and then in this way Krishna disclosed. Now the Acharyas explain another reason why Krishna may have done this. That Krishna is showing the entire universe to Mother Yashoda to tell her that this is why I am drinking your milk. Because I am not the only one drinking the milk. I have to feed the entire universe. So please allow me to drink. That is why she is called as Pushti Devi. She is the one who nourishes the entire universe. Because she is nourishing the person who is nourishing the entire universe. So Krishna is giving her a reason. Don't be in a hurry. Let me drink as much as I want. Because I have the entire universe to feed. So you please feed me. Right? But uh, so in this way, she, uh, she is just so happy to continue to feed uh, Krishna. Now the next day, again, this incident happens when Krishna is drinking milk. And uh, this time, she has lost her memory of what happened yesterday by uh, the influence of Yoga Maya. You know, because the moment someone knows that Krishna is the Supreme Lord, then the feeling of being a mother becomes uh, very difficult. You know, you're unable to express that feeling and all of that. So, uh, by Krishna's own Yoga Maya, she forgets that. But she remembers that there was something that happened. I asked him to open his mouth. I wanted to count his teeth, but uh, I could not count. I don't remember what happened. She says, anyway. So, he was drinking his milk. And then uh, she tells him this time that, uh, Krishna, open your mouth. Open, open your mouth. And Krishna is not opening his mouth. And she's telling, open your mouth, open your mouth. And he's not opening his mouth. To open his mouth, she starts, she takes her nose and puts her nose on his belly and she tickles his belly. So, you know, we do this. Actually, you see this mother's behavior with, with small babies. Uh, this is a reflection of what Yashoda did with Krishna. We're all uh, imitations of that glorious pastime, right? So sometimes we also may look at this and we also may think that, oh, I also have a baby at home and this baby, my baby is also Krishna and that's a wrong way of thinking. So it is not that I look at Krishna and think of my baby. The idea is that I must look at my baby at home and that should remind me of Krishna. Thinking that if ordinary babies are so cute, just imagine how cute the supreme cuteness should be. Right? He was the ultimate cuteness. So that, when we look at small babies, we should think of, think of Krishna. Everybody should remind us of Krishna. That is the mood. That's the mood of, uh, of a devotee. So she rubbed her nose on his belly. And Krishna giggles because, you know, he, it was tickling him. And then uh, she says, yawn, 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 yawn. And then he opens his mouth and he yawns. And then she looks into his mouth and she sees he has many teeth. That, oh, all his teeth have grown. Then she, she wonders, how, is, how did his teeth grow so fast? Then she puts her finger inside his mouth. And she realizes it's not teeth. It's just drops of milk everywhere on his gums. And she rubs that. And then she realizes only three teeth have come. And even with the three teeth, Krishna, small little teeth. And with that also he's smiling with only gums and three <laughs> small teeth. So Krishna smiles in this way. And she, she just enjoys these little pastimes. So, in this way, she was, she was uh, you know, overwhelmed with all the love that Krishna was giving. So, one day, Krishna decided that, let me give this love even to the other motherly gopis of Vrindavan. Let me give it to everybody. So, um, one day he is crawling in the courtyard of, uh, of Nanda Maharaj. And in this courtyard, they have these various pillars, big, big pillars. And these pillars were so... Um, uh, uh, today's pillars are all made of you know concrete and cement and all that those days pillars were made of very uh, exquisite stones shiny stones almost like mirrors you know you could see your own reflection and it had gems and rubies and all that so he was a king so it was like that a lot of opulence so Krishna was like that he was crawling and in one of those um, uh, one of those gems while he was crawling he could see a reflection of a bird and looking at the reflection of the bird, 
Krishna from far away, he takes his hand and with closing one eye, he's trying to catch that bird, the reflection of the bird. And he's seeing that my, he thought his hand was so small. Then looking at that bird, he's thinking, I, I think I can hold this bird with my hand. And he's just doing this. You know, I don't know how many of you have done this. <laughs> when you look at the sun, sometimes you feel that, yeah, sun is only it's small. I think I can hold it in my hand. Right. Uh, so Krishna was thinking, I think I can hold this bir bird in my hand. And he was doing this. Then he thought, my hand is so big. I don't think I need my entire hand to hold the bird. My two fingers are enough to hold the bird. So he was doing that. And he was so happy that my hand is so big. And I, now I can hold birds. Every Any time a bird comes in front of me, I can hold. And all the elderly gopis who were there, you see, all these elderly gopis, they would all come to Yashoda Mai's house because they were uh, all churning butter together. And they were producing butter. This was the main business in uh, in Vrindavan, uh, Gokula at that particular time because they were producing butter. All this butter was going where? To come, sir, to Mathura, right? So that was their livelihood. So Mathura was the city at that time. Just even now also all villages everywhere, whatever work happens, all the sales happen in the cities. No? Like that Mathura was the main city. So all the butter used to go there at that time. Mm, so uh, the large place to do all of this was the house of uh, Nanda Maharaj. So or many of these ladies would come at that particular time. So uh, all of them were simply observing what Krishna was doing and they would feel very happy. And once they um, asked Krishna um, that, um, you know, these are things that we see even now many people do with small children. So they asked Krishna, show me your nose. And Krishna pointed at his nose and he said, this is my nose. And they said, show me your ears. And Krishna did this. Show me your eyes. And Krishna did this. Then they said, show me your teeth. And this was a very difficult question for Krishna because he doesn't have teeth. So uh, he went near his mouth and he said, he shrugged his shoulders and he said, no teeth. And, uh, of course, he didn't speak, but just through his shrugging his shoulders, they realized that Krishna does not. And Krishna himself giggles and all of them became very happy. And um, there was uh, another lady. Uh, she is the wife of Upananda. Upananda is the brother of Nanda Maharaj. So he says, uh, she makes all the men stand in one side and all the women stand in one side. And she tells Krishna, choose, uh, t you tell me who your mother is. And who your father is, she thought, you know, he may get confused. But uh, Krishna, uh, he did a quick scan of the entire room and immediately pointed at Mother Yashoda. He said, that's my mother and that's my father, Nanda Bhattha. And everybody was very happy looking at this and everybody was applauding. So in this way, Krishna gave a lot of pleasure even to all the other elderly senior gopis who were there in uh, Vrindavan. So during this pastime, um, one special pastime that happened was, um, and before this pastime, of course, many, many years ago, 100 Devata years ago. How much is one year of a Devata in uh, in the heavenly planets uh, compared to our days? Yeah. One day is? Yeah. One day, 24 hours. Uh, their 24 hours is our one day. Right, so their day is six months, night is another six months, like that. Um, Uttarayana, Dakshinayana, we have here, right? And so, uh, in this way, hundred of Devata years that's a long time ago. Okay, there were two personalities who were the sons of Kubera. Okay, and their names were anybody. Yeah. Mani Griva and Nalakovera. So these two were there. Now these two young boys, father is Kubera, you can imagine, right? We can't even imagine the amount of money that Ambani may have. You, we, so imagine the amount of money that uh, Kubera may have, right? Unlimited. Kubera is uh, the treasurer of the entire universe. He has a lot of money. So how much of um, luxury his two sons may have? So his two sons were living in great luxury. So one day, they were bathing in, in a lake, in a river. And uh, Narada Muni was coming at that time. And these two were drunk, heavily drunk. And they were bathing and they were without any clothes and in a very indecent form. And uh, even when Narada Muni appeared there, they continued to behave in a very indecent manner. 
and Narad Muni, of course, they don't get angry in this way and even their anger is for a greater reason. So even when a sadhu gets angry at someone, it is for their good. So Narad Muni, immediately looking at them, he says, even though I am standing here, you are standing there without any clothes, shamelessly. So looks like you want to stay without clothes. So I curse you that you will stay without clothes as a tree because trees don't wear clothes. So I curse you in this way. So both of them became two Arjuna trees. But before, the, before they became like that, they begged for forgiveness from Narada Muni and they said, please forgive us. And all their, they were drunk, alcohol, all that went down immediately. Right? So instantly they forget, they became sober, they fell at his feet and they said, please forgive us. And uh, Narad Muni said, okay. And uh, he said, I will forgive you. But I cannot take back the curse. I already gave you the curse. But let me tell you, a hundred years from now, the Supreme Lord himself will come and he will liberate you. So there cannot be a better liberation for you after that. So they, they just accepted it. And both Nalakubara and Manigriva, they came to Brajabhumi, Vrindavan. And they became two big, gigantic Arjuna trees. You've heard of Arjuna tree? Arjuna. There is a tree called Arjuna. The bark of Arjuna is very good for health. In Ayurveda, you talk about Arjuna bark for uh, the heart. right? If anybody has any heart problems or you have a weak heart, you make a paya. Paya is tea out of Arjuna bark. It makes your heart very strong. So this Arjuna tree... Is an auspicious tree. So both became these Arjuna trees. Now that is a background story. Now coming to Krishna. Once Mother Yashoda, as usual, she was feeding Krishna. And Krishna doesn't like stopping the bre breastfeeding. No? So uh, one day, what was happening was uh, Mother Yashoda had kept some milk for boiling. And uh, she was bre breastfeeding Krishna. And nobody else was there at that time. And milk was about to overflow that uh, she felt, oh, nobody is there, uh, milk is going to get wasted. She, she pulled Krishna out and she kept Krishna there. And she went to switch off, not switch off, I think, remove, there's no, nothing to switch off those days. <laughs> switch off the gas. So she went to uh, pick the vessel and keep it down and all that. So she did that. And uh, what happened to Krishna? Krishna got really upset. Whole universe is not fed now, no? What to do? So uh, he got really upset with her. And he said uh, nothing to say. He couldn't, still couldn't speak. So he went crawling. And uh, by now, he had learned a little bit of walking. You know, a little bit of walking he had learned. Um, and um, while doing this walking, he was slowly, but he was walking. He started breaking all the pots there. All the butter pots, yogurt pots. He started breaking. Very naughty. And then not just that. He called some of his friends. Who are his friends? Monkeys. Right? He invited the monkeys. And these monkeys were already always waiting. The monkeys are the same. Even now, if you go to Vrindavan, the monkeys are still the same. They're still waiting. Huh? So, waiting for an opportunity. So, these monkeys came. And Krishna, he climbed on a motor. Uh, motor is what is used for, you know, uh, crushing chilies or grains and all that. You know, in villages, you have these. It's made of stone. Um, or wood or some other you know heavy object. So Krishna somehow climbed on top of that and his partner in crime was Balaram. Correct? So Balaram was also there. Now Krishna somehow with his help he climbs on the motor and he breaks this pot and he's feeding the monkeys and mother Yashoda gets to know something is going on. So she slowly comes and as she's slowly coming there uh, she doesn't want to make any noise because these two will get to know. But Balaram got to know. And Balaram went into hiding. You know, he got scared and he went into hiding. And Krishna, uh, Mother Yashoda caught Krishna red-handed. Uh, actually, she couldn't catch him yet. He got down from the motor and he got to know Mother Yashoda is coming and she was about to catch him that he escapes and he runs. And then Mother Yashoda starts chasing him. And who can catch Krishna? The greatest of yogis in the universe cannot catch Krishna. So he is running and he is running and he is running and Mother Yashoda is also chasing him, chasing him, chasing him. And she is chasing him and she becomes so tired that her hair becomes loose and her flowers from her hair starts falling down. And looking at this, Krishna feels so bad. But slowly, he slows down his pace so that he can get caught. 
and then mother yashoda says got you and she catches him and uh, now she uh, he's crying and she's holding a stick in her hand and looking at the stick he becomes really afraid really scared and then mother yashoda feels oh he's getting really scared looking at the stick so she throws away the stick she doesn't want to scare him that much also so she throws away the stick and she says you're so naughty you broke everything and you fed the monkeys now the monkeys are here who's going to chase the monkeys away and um, krishna starts crying and then she takes krishna today i'm going to teach you a punishment and takes him to the same motor that he climbed on and puts him there and she looks for a rope to tie baby krishna so she tries to tie uh, baby krishna and she realizes the rope is at least 2 inches small hmm. then she throws that rope she goes to find a bigger rope she gets a bigger rope and she puts it around the waist of krishna but the bigger rope is also 2 inches small then she tells the other gopis that hey get me that other rope get me that other rope a bigger one she just gets a bigger rope and they put the bigger rope around again it is 2 inches small she's unable to understand this his waist is only this much then how is it that i'm trying but it's still 2 inches small and then uh, she says okay i'm not going to give up and she tells give me that other rope we'll tie two ropes together and they tie two ropes together and then she then get some other rope then the other gopis they say see yashoda i think this is a sign that we should not tie him because they are also feeling bad looking at krishna crying so she says no today i have to teach him a lesson if i don't do this it's a duty of the mother to punish the child and teach him uh, uh, teach lessons otherwise they'll grow up to become you know very unruly you know just like all the children here their parents are teaching them lessons no is it true yeah all your parents are strict with all of you yes or no they are too scared to say yes or no also okay <laughs> fine so uh in this way mother yashoda but they try 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 they got they get all ropes and strings together but it's always 2 inches small they are unable to understand this and then she gets really frustrated and very confused at the same time but then she is still determined and she says says no i'm not going to stop now this was a clash between krishna the supreme lord and yashoda the supreme devotee that's his shakti and her shakti and then the determination of a devotee and the supreme power of the supreme lord there is nobody in the universe can that can defeat the supreme lord but the supreme lord got defeated by the devotion of uh, mother yashoda and in this way looking at her determination and looking at her getting frustrated he felt so bad and he said okay now i let you tie and then suddenly she sees that there's a lot of rope and she is able to perfectly tie him and he allows that and then he starts crying again that please let me go please let me go no so much drama he does no so please let me go please let me go so she ties him and then balaram wants to come and release krishna but balaram is also so scared of yashoda that if i go and krishna is there calling balram come open this rope and balram from far is telling i if i come she's going to tie me also i'm not going to come then he wants to come but he's also scared so then um, yashoda mai goes away to do her work okay complaining cribbing that boy is always like this and that and she goes she do her work and all the uh, you know other ladies also are feeling bad for krishna but they she tells everybody everybody go back do your work and you know, stop being around him you know he is distracting and is stopping us from doing our work so everybody goes back to churning butter and doing whatever so krishna says okay today she has tied me because i broke some pot i'm going to teach her a lesson i'll break something very big today so then that big gigantic motor is a lord he can move planets also so he moved that motor he pushed it down and he starts crawling and crawling and crawling and crawling and he goes crawling into the garden area somehow nobody sees him and in the garden area there is this big two trees twin trees that are standing next to each other and krishna crawls between those two trees and the motor gets stuck between the two trees and there is no gap then krishna sees that and krishna does <clears throat> and he pushes and the two trees there's a big cracking sound boom and the two trees fall and the moment the two big gigantic trees fall nalakovera and manigriva these two devatas they appear from the two trees nobody else is able to see them but there were a few boys elderly gopa boys uh, who were able to see this 
they were able to see these two devatas coming out of the trees and they did a pradakshina of krishna and they thanked krishna that thank you uh, for relieving us from this situation now we're going to go back to our place and we will never forget you and we will live very good lives henceforth and we will never insult yogis and sadhus henceforth and they paid the obeisances to krishna and they go away and the boys there they keep looking that oh, what happened and looking at the sound you know nanda baba and others and yashoda mai everybody they come running and yashoda mai immediately you know she is she is feeling oh because of me i died and this happened what if something happened to krishna but krishna was just playing there and then everybody wondered what happened how can these two big trees fall how did this happen is it a demon again did some rakshasa come what happened then these young boys they came and said no 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 krishna broke it and then two devatas came out of that they did pradakshina they said hey, stop building all these stories we are worried about krishna and you come some devata came out of tree and all that nonsense these boys are always like this they said tell the truth why is nobody believing us but nobody believed them right only krishna knew and those boys knew right now krishna was back and um, in this way this entire episode of nalakovara manigriva and getting relief from their liberation it is said that just by listening to these, these past times even if speaking or listening or even thinking of these particular past times any kind of uh, sins that we may have performed in our many many lives not just this life but many many lives we get relief from all of that so all of us are fortunate that we are able to hear speak and think of krishna and think of this particular past time because anything that we have done in the past we get a lot of relief from all of that it is all destroyed okay so in this way krishna there were many many past times in uh, in this particular form and uh, there are so many i can continue uh, for a long time but in the interest of time maybe there is one more past time of krishna looking at a pillar i said pillar you can look at your reflection so krishna looks at his own pillar uh, sorry his own reflection in a pillar this is one of those days when he was learning to stand you know while crawling learning to stand he sees his own reflection and he tries to wipe away that uh, he thinks it's a picture somebody would have drawn it he tries to wipe it away but it uh, it doesn't go away because it's a reflection then he gets scared of that because his mother told him don't talk to strangers then he thinks that somebody is there in the house then he crawls back to his mother and then he feels very secure with his mother right so the shastras explain that there is nobody there is no deity on this planet like mother yashoda because the security of the entire universe is narayana everybody feels secure being with narayana and that narayana feels secure with mother yashoda so there is nobody greater than mother yashoda in this world so to uh, establish that there was once an incident when lord shiva himself when he hears that krishna has appeared he says i want to go and see krishna and then he wants to be he wants this to be his solo meditation he didn't want his wife to come so mother parvati when she hears parvati says i will also come and he says no it is very far away and you know we have to go from here we are here we have to go to vrindavan he gives so many reasons Uh, so you know everybody wants their solo moment sometime no their me time or whatever so they need their solo time so uh, lord shiva said gave me so many reasons but anyway she did not persist because she realized that okay you know you want to go by yourself she says okay go but uh, get me that butter you know i've heard that in vrindavan you get very nice butter so go get that butter he says yeah, yeah okay okay fine so uh, he goes and uh, he goes as a brahmana he is dressed as a as a brahmana he takes the form of a brahmana and he enters vrajabhumi then when he enters vrajabhumi he thinks if i just go normally uh, you know they may not allow because there's so many people who wants to want to see krishna now they may not allow me then i need to go as myself you know i'll go as shiva only then how will they deny me you know so he thinks so much then uh, he appears uh, he takes his real form as sada shiva and you know bhasma dari his full body is filled with bhasma and jatadari and he's got his body is filled with snakes and he is carrying a trishula and he walks in this way and he taps on the door of uh, yashoda mai and she she opens the door and you know anybody would be shocked no? and if we see somebody we will not think it is shiva we will think well, who is this you know so she looks at him 
has some snakes crawling. She says, please just go behind. Uh, what do you want? And uh, she okay, you're a sadhu. Just wait. I will bring something. He says, no, I don't want anything. Then uh, what can I do for you? And she's, uh, he says, uh, I want to see your baby. She, she says, no, 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 no baby. Uh, you know, uh, He says, no, I want to see your baby. And you know, he does, he uh, hits his trishul on the ground. He says, I want to see Krishna. She says, I cannot let you. And she, because Lord Shiva is strict, she becomes even more strict. She says, I will not let you. What do you mean that you want to see the baby? Look at you. You have all dust and all that. I just bathe my baby. You, you have all basma on your body. I will not let my let you touch my baby. <laughs> Lord Shiva thinks, what is this? I am I am Shiva. You can't stop me. And uh, she says, I can't let you. And uh, he he feels helpless. Then he becomes humble. He says, please, I will do anything. You just I just want to see him. Okay, you don't hand him over. I just want to look at him. She says, no, no, no. Looking at you, he will get scared. Look at your form. You have snakes and all that. Looking at you, my baby will get scared. I don't want all this. So, here, Sadashiva is helpless. He cannot meet Krishna. And there Krishna wants to meet Sadashiva. And there he is helpless. And he cannot come. So, both of them are feeling helpless. You can imagine the power of Mother Yashoda. That she is able to stop the greatest powers in the universe from meeting each other. Right? So, you cannot meet Krishna without Mother Yashoda without her blessings. So even Sadashiva himself couldn't meet her. So uh, Lord Shiva gets really, uh, he says, okay, I will sit here for some time. Hmm? I'll wait. I'll wait. She says, you wait, uh, do whatever you want. I, you're not seeing my baby. After some time she thinks, okay, he's a sadhu. Um, I cannot let him go empty-handed. She's thinking some rishi, some yogi has come from somewhere. So she says, okay, I'll give him some butter. Uh, so she carries a pot of butter and she gives it. Then he remembers, oh, yeah, Parvati wanted butter. So he t tells, okay, thank you for the butter. But now I want, uh, she says, no, no, baby, you know, take the butter home. Then he feels so sad, he goes to the banks of Yamuna and he starts meditating. Then here, baby Krishna starts crying. And he cries and he cries and cries like he has never cried before. And then Mother Yashoda is wondering, what happened? You know, again, some evil eye or something, what should we do? Uh, then the other, uh, you know, motherly gopis who are there, they say that, um, see, uh, the thing is, if any sadhu goes away empty-handed from your house um, without being completely satisfied, then, you know, it's inauspicious. It is not very good. So that sadhu who came and he went, uh, no, but I gave him butter. He didn't ask for butter. You gave him butter. But he wanted to see Krishna. He went very dissatisfied. She says, okay, yeah, correct. So, uh, she goes out of the house to call him, but Lord Shiva is not there anymore. He has gone to Yamuna and he is meditating there. So, then everybody goes to Yamuna, let's go find him, let's go find him. And finally, he is there somewhere near Yamuna and he is meditating and they see uh, Lord Shiva also like never before. He is also crying. He is sitting in meditation, but he is also crying that I am I was unable to have darshan of Krishna. So, he starts crying. He is also weeping. And then he sees all the Vrajavasis there and he wipes his tears. He says, yes, what can I do for you? He says, please, we are sorry. Why don't you come back? Then um, uh, he goes there. He goes back. And he says, now can I see Krishna? And Yashoda Mai, very carefully, far away, she says, yeah, see. Okay. Happy. I'll take him inside. Uh, now he knows he has an upper hand because Krishna is still crying. So he says, no, this is not enough. I want to hold him. And she says, hold. See, you have something on your neck and all this is crawling and all that. This is, I can't uh, do this. He says, you don't know who he is. He sleeps on a very big snake. You don't, all this is nothing for him. So, uh, but you know, he says, okay, I'll calm them down. So all the snakes go down and you know, all the snakes go down. He says, now you're fine. Uh, they're not going to leave me and go. But you know, they're, they're, the one on the snake, he removes them because he's got on the neck, on his arms, everywhere, snakes are there. So they all crawl down. Then uh, Yashoda, and none of us would have given our baby, you know, that way. So Yashoda, my very careful, because he's not, he's crying, he's crying, what to do? And the moment Lord Shiva touches him, he stops crying. And then both of them are looking at each other and both of them have tears in their eyes. And Krishna is giggling and Krishna is so happy looking at Sadashiva. So this is a very beautiful pastime. And after all this, uh, Sadashiva gives a blessing and she says, give him all the blessings. Uh, so Lord Shiva says, he will always be victorious and uh, there will never be any evil eye on him. And, you know, he gives all those blessings and then uh, he gives him back uh, to Mother Yashoda. But then he also pays his obeisances to Mother Yashoda 
because he realizes that Madhuri Vishwada is the greatest personality in this in this universe because uh, uh, she is controlling Krishna. And this from this particular incident also of Damodara, we understand that Krishna is asking for relief. Krishna is asking that give me mukti, give me mukti. And he's asking Mother Yashoda for mukti. The entire universe, the greatest of yogis and the Siddha Loka, Brahma Loka, all of them are asking Krishna that you are the abode of mukti, you give us mukti. But he's asking Yashoda for mukti. So they all realize that there is nobody greater than Mother Yashoda. Okay. So these were the few of the many, many pastimes of Mother Yashoda. And uh, we should not think of Mother Yashoda as some ordinary lady, as some ordinary you know, lady with a child or something like that. She's a very great personality. Um, and they're both from the spiritual world, from Goloka Vrindavan. Anybody knows uh, who they were when they appeared on this planet before they became Yashoda and Nanda Baba? Uh -huh. That is Devaki and Vasudeva. That is Devaki and Vasudeva. Devaki and Vasudeva are that. What about uh, mm -hmm. Yashoda? That is also Devaki and Vasudeva in their three different incarnations. Nanda Baba and uh, Yashoda Mai, both of them are called, uh, were initially uh, Vasus, Vasu uh, Devatas. There are different kinds of Devatas. So the one particular form of Devatas are called Vasus. So, uh, amongst the Vasus, there was Drona and his wife, Dhara. Drona and Dhara, right? So, this Drona and Dhara, you see, uh, Vasudeva and Devaki had to meditate for a very, very long time, you know, years and years of years and penance uh, to become the parents of Krishna. But um, Nanda Baba and Yashoda Mai did not have to do anything. They simply asked the permission of Lord Brahma that can we become parents and Lord Brahma permitted. Why so? Because actually Yashoda and Nanda Baba were originally from Goloka Vrindavana, Vaikuntha. They were not from this world. So they were always Yashoda and Nanda. But they appeared as Devatas and just like we follow protocol, you know, maybe a founder of a company will enter a company, but they will still follow the protocol of speaking, taking permission from the CEO or manager. Can I speak to this person? Can I do this? Can I do this? They, they follow protocol. Just like that, they also came from the spiritual world, but they followed the protocol of asking permission from the CEO of this universe, that is Lord Brahma. So they just followed and Lord Brahma said, he is yours anyway, so please go and become their parents. So uh, immediately they became parents. So they are extraordinary personalities. They're not ordinary uh, personalities, both Nanda Baba and Yashoda Mai. And so in this way, there's so many wonderful pastimes of Krishna, baby Krishna. Okay, so we will end this uh, class today with the few pastimes that we that we spoke, so that we may remember Krishna, we may remember Yashoda Mai, we may remember Nanda Baba. And in that particular mood, uh, we've not sung Damodar Ashtakam yet, right? Mm -hmm. Now we will do. So we will all sing Damodar Ashtakam in that particular mood. Thank you very much. So. Um, Yashoda Nandana Krishna ki, Yashoda Mai ki, Nanda Baba ki, Srila Prabhupada ki. Hare Krishna Mahamatra, Mahananda Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare, Hare. Okay, so uh, this being the Kartika month, uh, the, especially Damodara month, we organized the Damodara Arti. So, Mahananda Prabhu will sing uh, Damodara Ashtakam. <laughs> so, we all will offer a ghee lamb to the Krishna. Thank you.